Hola amigos, que tal? Stuart here from Spain Speaks with an update video today. We'll have a bit of a chat about some of the things that are happening in Spain at the moment as I go for a walk along the coast here in Portugal. So uh, let's go. Now one of the big topics of conversation on the channel this past week has been the topic of tourism phobia, the hate of tourism or the hate of tourists. And of course this topic popped up because in Barcelona anti-tourist graffiti has once again appeared on walls in a popular neighborhood there uh, that was celebrating its local fiestas. And of course, uh, as we know, this was a problem back in 2017, I think, when it first reared its ugly head in places like Barcelona, also in places like Palma de Mallorca and other cities in Spain. And of course, after the pandemic, it is back again. And the group responsible for this graffiti is the same group that was behind the anti-tourism sentiment back in 2017. It's a, a radical left-wing youth group, apparently, that uh, doesn't like tourism ruining local neighborhoods in Barcelona. They complain that some of these traditional barrios are changed forever with this mass tourism, that prices go up, especially when it comes to rents and other prices, for example, supermarket prices. And of course, if they had their way, all tourists would be kicked out of these neighborhoods. And uh, it's an interesting debate. Back in 2017, it wasn't only graffiti that was trying to get tourists out of cities like Barcelona, but they went even further, some of these radical groups, and they uh, stopped tourist buses in the city of Barcelona, slashed tires. I think they also went into a restaurant in Palma de Mallorca and uh, started insulting tourists, telling them to get off the island. So at the moment, it's only graffiti, but who knows what could happen in coming months and years if the situation gets worse. Maybe the violent acts will return. I hope not, but uh, you never know. And of course it opens the debate, is mass tourism good or bad for a country like Spain? And is it good or bad for cities like Barcelona? That's the issue. As we know, Spain is a country that has developed a huge tourist industry over the last 50 or 60 years. In fact, Spain has done everything in its power to get more and more tourists to visit the country. It has increased the amount of hotel rooms. It has increased tourist facilities around the country, activities and things like that. And uh, as we know, some parts of Spain are very dependent on tourism. In fact, tourism accounts for 12, 13, perhaps 14% of national national GDP. And when you go to tourist areas, for example, the Canary Islands, some parts of the Levante coast and some parts of the Costa del Sol, the amount is even more. In a place like the Canaries, I don't know what the official figure would be, but uh, probably 30, maybe 40 percent of GDP in those areas uh, comes from tourism. So it's a very, very important industry. But as I said, it was back in 2017 when this anti-tourism sentiment first reared its ugly head in places like Barcelona. What were the causes of that? Well, I think, and as I said in yesterday's video, it was due to the Airbnb explosion. Every man and his dog in cities like Barcelona decided that it would be a good idea to rent their apartments to tourists instead of the more traditional ways of renting to locals. And of course, that is when the problems started. That is when tourism started to creep into these neighborhoods, because as I said before, it was limited to hotels and places like that. But when everybody started renting their apartments to tourists, that is, as I said, when it started to creep into the neighborhoods. And that's when people started to get pissed off. And the challenge has been, and the challenge still is, for Spain's politicians to find the correct balance. Apparently, they're still working on it because five years later, and of course with the coronavirus pandemic in the middle of those five years, the problem is back again, unfortunately. We saw how during the pandemic, Spain's economy was decimated because of the loss of tourism, and it has taken longer than other European countries to recover because of its reliance on tourism. There's been a debate raging in Spain over the last five years or so, whether or not it needs to change this tourism model, move away from mass tourism, and try to find a more sustainable tourism. In some parts of the country, it seems to be working, but in other parts of the country, it does not. For example, the islands, Mallorca, 
places like that, Ibiza, the Canary Islands as well. And as I said, those coastal areas do seem to attract a lot of tourists, especially in the summer season. And I think the government wants to try to encourage people to visit Spain all year round, not only in the summer months, but of course that is difficult. Spain does have a lot of things to offer a tourist outside of the peak season. There are plenty of cities to see, plenty of rural areas to visit, but of course a lot of people that visit Spain come for one reason, sun, sand and cheap alcohol and uh, that model is proving very very difficult to change. So we'll see if Spain's tourism model changes in coming years, if they can find the balance between keeping locals happy and uh, having lots and lots of tourists come into these cities because uh, as we know and it is a fact that local economies do depend a fair bit on tourism. There's no doubt about that. So interesting times ahead as far as Spain's tourism model is concerned. Now another thing that created a fair bit of debate in yesterday's comment section was the topic of illegal swimming pools in Spain and also illegal house extensions. Uh, the government apparently back in 2014 passed a law that gave it powers to crack down on this type of activity and of course local councils also crack down on this type of activity and I'm not sure how many illegal swimming pools there are in Spain but I imagine that there are maybe tens of thousands of illegal swimming pools in Spain because people don't want to go through the bureaucracy which is something that we'll talk about in just a minute uh, to get their swimming pools licensed and of course legal and of course people decide to go rogue put swimming pools in their backyards, do house or home extensions and don't get the proper permissions. But of course now local councils use drones, they put drones up to see what's going on in people's backyards. They probably couldn't do that 10 years ago but now they can. So up go the drones and they compare their uh, records with what is going on in people's backyards. If uh, you have an illegal pool, no doubt you will be discovered. And I remember when we bought our home back in 2002, just how many people added extensions to their homes and put swimming pools in their backyards. In fact, a lot of the extensions that were done in uh, our neighborhood were illegal. And uh, one of our neighbors went around and reported something like 40 or 50 homes for illegal house extensions. So so uh, be careful with that also that a neighbor will dob you in because as we know bad neighborly relationships can also be a problem and you don't want to get one of these people reporting you for illegal house or home renovations or illegal house or home extensions and also for that illegal swimming pool that you have put in your backyard. So as I said yesterday be careful if that is the case. And I think one of the big problems for foreign people that buy property in Spain is that they buy a home that has one of these illegal extensions or an illegal swimming pool and they can get into trouble. And a few people in the comment section did talk about this. So be careful if buying property in Spain and make sure that everything is legal and above board, especially the pool. And the final thing I'll talk about today is the topic of bureaucracy in Spain. Another hot topic in the comment section yesterday, because as we saw in a piece of news, young people are coming up against the bureaucratic wall in Spain for the first time because of a 400 euro grant that the government has given young people so that they can enjoy cultural activities. A lot of young people complaining that the uh, web portals are not working, that uh, it's difficult to get appointments to get their hands on this grant. And of course, as I said, they they're realizing for the first time just how difficult bureaucracy is in Spain. And it's something that we all know about, or at least people that live in Spain know about, just how difficult it is to get things done in Spain. And it's something that over the last 22 or 23 years of my time living in Spain has not changed. I thought with technology that things would get better, that you would be able to do a lot of these services online. But uh, as I just said, a lot of the web portals crash when there is high demand. And of course, getting appointments to get these things done, again, difficult to do. So when it comes to bureaucracy in Spain, it seems that nothing ever changes and uh, it's a real shame. And I asked myself the question, is it really that difficult for civil servants or bureaucrats in Spain to give decent service? Why can't they set up a decent website that can handle demand? Why can't they put more people on for peak times when people need to get things done? 
Why is it that way? Of course, the pandemic got in the way, and I think a lot of services, especially when it comes to government services, were cut back, and a lot of these services still haven't recovered to pre-pandemic levels. And let's be honest, they were pretty bad pre-pandemic, and they're even worse now. But uh, again, I just can't understand why Spain can't improve its bureaucracy. It's not like there's not enough civil servants working. There are plenty of civil servants out there. So why can't they improve the service that they give to the public? At the end of the day, it's called the public service, but unfortunately, they don't give good service to the public. So that's my rant for the day about bureaucracy in Spain or the terrible bureaucracy or red tape that we have to put up with to get even simple things done in Spain, as I said, unfortunately, still existing today in 2022 and uh, not getting any better. So on that note, I'll wrap the video up. Questions and comments, please leave them in the section below. Let us know what you think of Spain's tourism model, whether it is sustainable or whether it needs to change. Let us know your experience experiences dealing with Spanish bureaucracy, if they have been good or bad, let us know in that comment section below. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it, thumbs down if you didn't. I'll see you in the next one. Hasta luego.